What I want for you is this. I want you equipped with the skills of response to deal with the life you actually have, not the life you wish you had. Are we on the same page on that? First and foremost, here's the mindset. I don't control events. I do control my response, and I can create outcomes, but I can't control them. And a lot of people say, well, I can control the outcome. Um, or they'll think they can, or they'll pick something, and, and the test is pretty easy, right? If you controlled outcomes, what would your bank account look like right now? If you controlled outcomes, what would your uh, record have been last year? If you controlled outcomes, what would your batting percentage be? What would every relationship in your life look like? What would your job look like? What? We just start going down the line and we say, look, we can't control outcomes. When do we get the outcomes we want? We get the outcomes we want when our response is good enough. Never before. So this mindset, three mistakes that we can make if you look at this mindset. Number one is trying to control events. What would classify as an event? Yeah. Every at-bat is an event. Every pitch is an event. And you notice it scales up, right? Every game is an, it just, it scales up to the minorest of minor and the little of little to the big, right? Having a kid, event. Getting married, event. Being married, event. Other people in your life, event. Feedback, event. Coaching, event. Success, event. Getting your first big paycheck, event. We don't control these things. They're all gonna happen. What kind of events are you going to experience from this point forward in your life and in this game? What are you gonna experience? Hint, everything. You're gonna experience all of it. That's why I lay this BCD stuff out, why we're teaching this, because you, and if you have this capacity, please let me know. You don't have any ability to shield yourself from experiencing the full spectrum of events that all of us are going to experience. You can't shield yourself from tragedy. You can't shield yourself from bad calls. You can't shield yourself from unfair things. You can't shield yourself from losing. The only way to shield yourself from losing is getting out of a competitive environment, in which case you've actually had the biggest loss, which is losing the game. You're going to experience like I am, you're gonna experience everything. The second mistake we could make, so the first one is trying to control events. What's the second mistake we could make? Not controlling our response. And then the third mistake we could make is trying to control outcomes rather than trying to create them through good responses. So when I look at, uh, you got these sweatshirts, right? You got this DMGB. This is where DMGB was born for me. Because I looked at E plus R equals O, and here's what I came to a conclusion of. Every outcome that I want that I don't have, why don't I have it? Let me phrase that again. Every outcome I want that I don't have, why? What's the answer to that? So either one, I didn't go after it, or number two, I went after it and couldn't reach it. Which means I didn't have what I want because I wasn't good enough. So what's the answer to the outcomes that you want but don't have because you're not good enough? Doesn't matter, get better. This is where it got born. If there's an outcome that we want that we don't have, the reason is because we're not good enough. Doesn't matter, get better. Or we just didn't try, in which case we can't, we're not gonna complain about it, it's just not something that we're going after. But this is where DMGB got born and where this mindset came. I create outcomes, I can't control them. So just like Vogel, like you were saying, you do everything right, but it doesn't work, it doesn't get there. Well, it's because why? You might have done everything right or well or good, but the, in, the E that you were going against was simply bigger than the R that you gave to it. Maybe the other competitor worked as hard or harder and he beat you that time, even though you did everything right, because he's working his ass off too. The answer is what? Still doesn't matter, get better. If my R, this is the, the cause and effect of this, it keeps it really obvious. If my R was good enough, then what happens? The outcome takes care of itself. Now the unfair part is this. Are all of us operating from the same set of events in our lives? No. Not all of us are operating from the same set of events. I work with a lot of teams, and especially, less, less at this level, but a lot at the, at the high school and the college level. A lot of coaches come and I work with them and we advise and I get a lot of BCD from coaches. And the BCD that I get from coaches around players revolves around two different kinds of players. Coaches BCD to me about players who come from poverty and they BCD to me about players who come from privilege. And the players who come from poverty, they complain about, oh, the lack of the structure and the belief systems they have and it's so hard to work with them and it's, ah. Oh, and then the kids who come from privilege are soft and entitled and spoiled. Apparently to be a great baseball player, you have to have the exact right amount of money in your life. And my point is this, whether you come from poverty or whether you come from privilege, like did any of you choose what to be born into? Like did any of you have a hand of saying, hey, this is, this is the life I'd love to have given to me? I didn't. We all have to deal with the events that we had from our life. But is a, is a person who comes from more any less responsible for dealing with his life? And could you make a case 
that the guy who sometimes comes for more has a disadvantage in a bunch of ways because a lot of stuff was handed to him, reality was shielded from him, and he didn't have a chip on his shoulder to compete the way that somebody who didn't have as much had? I could make that case. And could you make a case that the guy who came from less had a disadvantage because of opportunity or support system or funds? Of course. But if you come from this or you come from that, those are both still what? And you are still responsible for responding in your life with the event that you had. Because I got the cards I got and you got the cards that you got. We could debate all day long about who had a harder life, who has more pain, who had more. And I don't want to debate with you. What I want for you is this. I want you equipped with the skills of response to deal with the life you actually have, not the life you wish you had. Are we on the same page on that? Because that's where we've all got to operate from. We're going to work hard here and go all of that. But here's the thing. We have to build ourselves to be ready to respond at our best when the circumstances are unfair, unideal, and even stacked completely against us, because that's when most people won't. That's when most people are going to be CD or throw in excuses or slow down. <clears throat> Everybody can deal pretty well with an event that is teed up or neutral. It's when this starts getting real variant, right? It's when you get, I mean, when do people make the worst mistakes in response? When they get a flood of money and a ton of success, you start finding that response gets a lot less disciplined. Have you noticed that? You start giving people a ton of success, a ton of accolades, a ton of attaboys, a ton of money, the quality of that starts going down for most people. You take all that stuff away and you give them a lot of failure and a lot of difficulty and a lot of strain and a lot of, and the quality of that starts going down. So at the extreme on both ends, this starts to suffer for most people. We want to be different than that. We want this to be our operating. At every at bat, every game, every pitch, every, like that's how we operate every single day. So here's how it works. When you bring this mindset, you're going to feel more in control because you are. You're going to see more options because, you're, because you can. And you're going to use more time on things you can control, which unspoken on the back end of that is you're going to stop using or wasting times on things that you can't control. And how valuable would it be to feel more in control, see a lot more options for how I can go out about this, and to be able to use more time on what we have in our control and not waste things on time that we don't? What's the value of that to the organization, Jerry? We did this one time. We did it with a team once, and we did it with a, uh, with a, with a different business. We actually calculated out what the cost. We basically calculated out what's the hourly cost of everybody in the room based on their salaries. And then we averaged out how often does the average person spend BCDing. And we averaged it out to the average person spend total collective time about, you know, some people say it's like an hour a day total, you know, five minutes here, five minutes there, that kind of thing. Uh, or you know, three or four hours a week. And then we literally did the total cost of everybody in this room based on salaries and total payments at the hourly rate of you know, either an hour a day, you know, seven to four hours a week. And we did the total yearly cost of blaming, complaining, and defending. It's an ugly number. That right there is what we're all looking. We all want to feel more in control of ourselves and our lives. We all want to have and see more options available, feeds our self-confidence, and we all want to be able to use time on stuff that we don't. We don't want to waste time on stuff we don't control. But we need a really good system for doing that, okay? So here's the, uh, the E plus R equals those skills. Here's how it actually works. Number one is we're going to start with the outcome. We're not starting with the event. We're starting with the outcome. What do I want? This is what the best competitors do. This is what the best people pursuing the life they're trying to build do. We're not starting from the event we have because we're, we're going to be limited in, by the structure that we currently exist in. We're going to be chasing down and pursuing something existing. Put it this way. We're not starting from what's happened the past 18 years. What are we starting with? We're starting with what we want to happen in 2019, 2020. That's what we're going after. But then we're going to say, all right, what's the circumstance we're currently sitting in as it exists today? Once you identify what you want and what you have, now we're going to focus on bringing discipline to the response that we need. If you start to apply this structure, and this is that lens, you flip the, put this lens over, we start to realize that once you identify what you want and you identify the circumstances you have, the response actually starts to become pretty obvious. This is where the shortcut comes in. What does discipline look like in my response in that particular moment? Let me define this real quick. People always ask, well, when does DMGB actually apply and how do I do it? And so I, I, I want to give a filter for it. Is this a DMGB moment? Like, should I use DMGB here? Two questions. The first question, is something going to happen next? What are the two available answers to that? If the answer is yes, it's a DMGB moment. If it's no, there's no DMGB moment. Second question, will my decision affect me or people important to me? If those are yeses, it's a DMGB moment. Is something going to happen next? Kyle, let's say you guys win the World Series this year. Let's picture it out. Is something going to happen after that? What's that make it? And make it a DMGB moment. 
If, you're, if your record is worse next year, <clears throat> is something going to happen after that? What's that make it? A DMGB moment. Until you die. That's exactly it. This is the point. But the reason I put these up is this. We tend to drift away from doesn't matter, get better, because what do we forget? We forget that what? Something is going to happen next and that our decision will actually impact us and the people that are important to us. We lose that. We win the World Series and what do the emotion tell you? We win any championship, what's the emotion tell you? This is gonna last. We need a reminder. Something's gonna happen next. And the decisions that I make are going to affect me. So whether you're at the high of highs, on the cusp of that, drifting in the middle, drifting to the bottom, or you're at the bottom, you just ask yourself two questions. Is something gonna happen next and will my decision affect me or the people around me? If the answer is yes to those, it doesn't matter, get better. And I've yet to find a moment other than the, the moment when you die where those two things aren't applying. And that makes everything a DMGB moment. Now, here's what DMGB doesn't mean, just so we're clear on this. We'll talk about this tomorrow, wrestle with it. DMGB does not mean hustle through an emotion. But you watch somebody, have somebody close to them pass away and then you watch a slow spiral start. And you watch somebody go into a spiral and they never get out of it. All of life is lived in reaction to that death from that point forward and it puts them in a really bad spot. And so there's a time to grieve, there's a time to process, there's a time to struggle and strain. After somebody close to us dies, is something gonna happen after that? Will our decisions affect us and people important to us, even after something tragic like that? Absolutely. So we're still on the hook. It's, it hurts, it's painful, it'll take a while, so it's a longer one. But we're still gonna, we're still gonna go attack that. You know, and then there's all the little stuff in between, okay? So I'll make sure that we got this. We're not trying to hustle past it. We just want to acknowledge. You know, it might not need to happen next right away, but hey, let's, let's sit in this for a little while. You know, you're gonna enjoy, if you win some games, you'll enjoy it for a minute, but you gotta put it on a scale. Can't enjoy it for two years. You know, can't enjoy one win for, you know, two weeks. You know, we're on a little, you know, two hour kick, and then let's roll into the next one because we gotta go tackle this, this next game.